For an update on the PSAC strike, we're now joined by the national president, Chris Aylward. Chris, thank you for coming to the studio. My pleasure, Michael. Listen, I want to begin here with what we just heard there from Mona Forte in the House of Commons today, essentially saying that there is right now what she considers a competitive deal on the table and that your union continues to make unaffordable demands. Mm -hmm. To whom? It would be my question. Uh, workers need a fair uh, wage increase in this country. Uh, we've said all along, we want to make sure that our members at least stay in line with the rate of inflation. Our members, the vast majority of our members, make between forty and $65,000 a year. That's a salary that cannot suffer another rollback, and that's what the minister is suggesting. And we're saying we need to see wages uh, that are, you know, keep our members in line with the rate of inflation. Every single worker in this country deserves a fair and decent uh, wage increase. Uh, you know, workers in this country are fed up, as we've been saying. Uh, so as much as, yes, uh, the employer has 9% uh, on the table, uh, we're saying, and, and we've compromised on our wage uh, demand. Uh, we, we've dropped uh, below 13.5% over the three years. And, and just to remind that uh, that 13.5% over the three years that we're asking for, for that same period, the rate of inflation is at 13.8%. So we believe that, again, our wage demand, which we've compromised and we've come down on, mm -hmm. uh, is still fair, decent, it's fair to workers in this country, and it will also be uh, fair to taxpayers. Because when you put more money in workers' pockets, they don't squirrel it away in some offshore bank account. They go out in their communities and they spend that money, and that's good for the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, workers are just fed up. Corporations are making record profits, but yet everybody wants to repress the wages of workers. And when the federal government does that, they're repressing wages for everyone in the country. Okay, down from 13.5. Can you say where you're at now then? We've compromised. Uh, we, we've, we've lowered our wage demand because that's what you know has to happen at the uh, negotiating table. So we've compromised uh, on our wage demand and uh, we need to see uh, a, a wage offer from the government uh, that's better than the current one they currently have on the table. Now, I appreciate that, that, that a strike is stressful for, for members, it's stressful in the union, certainly for the employer as well. Uh, but over the weekend, you, you called Mona Forte incompetent. Do you regret that? Look, we gave the employer on Thursday evening a comprehensive package that we thought we could get to a deal on. On Friday morning, the employer responded saying, we will, get, we will respond to this today. They didn't respond all day Friday, Friday night, Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. We still not had heard anything from the employer. So yes, the, the, you know, the, the bargaining team members were extremely frustrated. They were waiting for the employer for more than 30 hours to respond. How can the employer explain that with over 100,000 uh, federal public sector workers out on picket lines? And yet they take over 30 hours to respond on one uh, of the issues because that's what they had signaled. They would re be responding on one issue. It took them over 30 hours. Yeah, the frustration level did get a little uh, high on Saturday after we had heard nothing from the employer. And then we called the, uh, the, the media scrum for 115 and the mediator tried to rush us in the room after waiting for more than 30 hours, then tried to rush us into a room at one o'clock to preempt the, uh, the media scrum. So as soon as the employer had learned of our media uh, scrum mm -hmm. at 1.15, they tried to meet with us at 1 o'clock. And we're like, we're sorry, we're busy, we'll meet you at 1.30. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, yes, frustrations uh, certainly were, 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 were uh, uh, you know, uh, up there a little bit on the weekend. But as I said, you know, with a, over 100,000 of our members out on strike, we should not be waiting around for more than 30 hours for the employer to respond on one issue. How are your members feeling right now? You know, when you and I spoke initially on Wednesday, you said people were feeling very supportive, but, but subsequently since then, we heard from the Labor Board, you know mm -hmm. this, they say that there were irregularities in the strike vote. They say that at the end of the day, less than 30% of members actually cast a ballot on a strike. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling uh, uh, with, about the support within your union for this job action? I mean, uh, you know, as far as the, uh, the, the turnout of the members, uh, we said after we released the results that we had overwhelming support. The board said in that same report that there was overwhelming support for this strike. So our members, they didn't vote yes, they didn't vote no, they, they didn't go vote at all, but they're voting with their feet because they showed up last week and they showed up today uh, on the picket lines. And, and, and that's what we look to. 
uh, certainly, and, and some of those irregularities that the board is talking about. Mm -hmm. One of them, for example, is that when you come into a, a strike vote, you have to listen to a very short presentation of about 15 or 20 minutes, because we want to make sure the members understand exactly what's at stake here, and they understand what we're going on strike for. So that was one of the irregularities that the board uh, had indicated. We don't think that's an irregularity. We believe that's giving our members an opportunity to have you know, a, a good understanding and make an informed decision before they vote yes or no. Mm -hmm. Now, to my understanding, the last time the PSAC went on strike, uh, decades ago, it was about a three to four week strike. Uh, do you have, correct me if I'm wrong here, about $200 million in your strike fund. How long can you carry on this job action for? The, Michael, the, uh, the, the strike pay is not an issue. It is not a concern uh, at all for PSAC. Uh, we want the strike to end, though. We we do not want to keep uh, our members out on strike, and that's why, if you know, we're asking the government to come to the table with a new mandate, sit down and negotiate, uh, so that we can make some progress, end the strike for our members, and end the strike for Canadians because our members uh, provide the service, of course, that they uh, depend on every day. So at this point, the ball is in the government's court. You think? Yes, it is very much so. So you your last uh, offer went in at what time? Uh, the, our last uh, pass was made, uh, I believe it was yesterday evening. We have uh, received nothing from the employer. Okay. Uh, again, as you say, the strike pay is not there, but from your members, how long, how willing are they, are they going to be on the pickets for? Yeah, look, I mean, our members, uh, you know, they, they showed up. They, they showed up when we asked them uh, last week. Uh, we're on strike again uh, today. Our members escalated their actions today. Uh, I'm sure you're going to see more escalated uh, actions uh, tomorrow. Uh, the members are there. Uh, they, they understand. We have their backs to get them a good collective agreement. And obviously, they're demonstrating that they have our backs as well to make sure that we stay at the table. We fight for a fair uh, a deal that includes good working conditions and a fair and decent uh, wage increase. Mm -hmm. uh, quickly losing time here, but I do want to ask you, Chris, because it's been said that going into any election, every party right now is courting the workers' vote. Worker W, not Labor L, but the workers vote. How important do you think this is for the government to settle this? Uh, how do you think members and the public will judge the government if this is not settled quickly? Uh, look, I, I, I think uh, the government wants this settled. Uh, I, the, the, the minister, you know, in an open letter, uh, laid out for the first time uh, our priority issues uh, that are still outstanding. Uh, so I think that's a, a good signal that uh, when the minister that's responsible for these negotiations lays it out in an open letter to say, here are the priorities that are still at the table, uh, I think that's a good signal in that they uh, want to get to a deal as well. They want to resolve these issues uh, and get to a deal, and that's what we want. Chris Elward, thank you for the time. My pleasure, Michael. Thank you.